It's covered that Man United seeking long-term return as forward pushes Getafe Chiefs into dramatic change of plan. Mason Greenwood still looks unlikely to ever play for Manchester United again, as the true reasons behind his loan move to Getafe came to light. The 21-year-old forward is looking to rebuild his career in Spain, having been allowed to sign for the Madrid-based club on a loan deal for the duration of the season. And while the deal contains a clause allowing a recall to United in January, it is expected that the once-capped England attacker will see out the campaign in Spain. Greenwood will be hoping a spell in La Liga can help restore his reputation, not just as a footballer, but as a human being. Rightly or wrongly, the player is determined to grasp that second chance with both hands. Indeed, he is yet to play professional football since his arrest in January 2022, which saw his life and footballing career come tumbling down. While all charges against him were dropped by the Crown Prosecution Service in February of this year following the withdrawal of a key witness, Greenwood was prevented from resuming his career with immediate effect as United held their own review into his actions. Their intentions of bringing him back into the fold ultimately forced a U-turn with major public backlash, led by our own Football 365, preventing the player from playing for United again. And with a late scramble for his services ensuing, it was Getafe who ultimately won the race to secure his services. Plenty of angry voices still hit out at the La Liga side for making their raid. And this article here explains exactly why the little La Liga survivors were happy to take their chances of signing the controversial forward. Indeed, the La Liga club simply saw an opportunity they could not let pass them by. Founded in just 1983, the club recently celebrated their 40th birthday. They often struggle to compete in La Liga, particularly as the capital city's poor third cousin. Nonetheless, survive in La Liga they do, and the chance to sign Greenwood means he is already being branded as the Getafe GOAT. Simply speaking, Getafe saw their chance and took it. And while the move is a chance for Greenwood to get a career back on track, it is also seen as a major opportunity for United to net a return on a once 40 mm plus rated asset they were seemingly willing to write off just a year ago. At this point in time, it remains unlikely he will ever play for the Red Devils again. Manchester United will have to wait until January to make further additions to their Premier League squad. Having signed Andre Onana, Mason Mount, and Rasmus Hoylund for $180 million plus combined this summer, there were four other signings made on deadline day. Alte Bindir, Johnny Evans, Sofiane Amrabat, and emergency cover for left-back Sergio Reguilon, we're all welcomed in before the hectic 11 p.m. cutoff. But how many recruits will Eric Ten Hag demand mid-season? He has already spent 400 million during his reign as United manager, although other rivals have splashed out more money across that time. United captain Bruno Fernandes was, meanwhile, in sensational form for Portugal on Monday night as he provided four assists and scored during a 9-0 victory over Luxembourg. That means the playmaker should be confident for an impending return to Premier League duty versus Brighton on Saturday afternoon at Old Trafford. Again and again, United have provisionally targeted four significant signings next summer. United intend to strengthen at fullback, centre-back, central midfield, and in attack, with outgoings expected in most departments. Bayer Leverkusen's defensive pair, Jeremy Frimpong and Edmond Tapsoba were of interest during the summer when United considered approaches. United have also been monitoring Breton streaker Evan Ferguson, who plundered his first Premier League game hat trick against Newcastle United earlier this month. The 18-year-old signed a new contract until 2028 earlier this year to protect his resale value, and sources believe it is possible Ferguson could be transferred next year. Paul Pogba has been provisionally suspended after testing positive for a banned substance. Italy's national anti-doping, NADO Italia, tribunal has announced. The former United midfielder, who had two spells with the Premier League giants after progressing through their famed academy system, tested positive for elevated levels of testosterone while playing for Italian outfit Juventus in their Serie A fixture with Udinese on August 20th. 
Juventus won that meeting 3-0. Elsewhere, Pogba, who played 233 games for United, scoring 39 goals and 51 assists, was an unused substitute for Juventus on that date. However, the World Cup winner did feature in follow-up matches versus Bologna and Empoli, totting up 52 minutes in two cameo appearances from the substitute's bench. So, let's look what Mike Phelan talked to Cristiano Ronaldo, Eric Ten Hag, Maguire, Sir Alex Ferguson, and others. Mike Phelan discusses working with Sir Alex Ferguson, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Ralph Rangnick, and Eric Ten Hag's progress. Former Manchester United assistant manager Mike Phelan speaks exclusively to Sky Sports. The 60-year-old worked under Sir Alex Ferguson, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, and Ralph Ragnick. Phelan gives his lowdown on Harry Maguire, Cristiano Ronaldo, Gary Neville, and Eric Ten Hag. In an exclusive interview with Sky Sports, former Manchester United assistant manager Mike Phelan has lifted the lid on the standards set by Sir Alex Ferguson and looks at the work still to be done by Eric Ten Hag. Phelan was a long-standing figure on the Manchester United bench as assistant manager to Sir Alex before rejoining Old Trafford to work under Ola Gunnar Solskjaer and Ralph Rangnick. In a lengthy interview with Sky Sports, Phelan also speaks about working with Harry Maguire, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Gary Neville. The 60-year-old gave insight into the dressing room environment during Sir Alex's trophy-laden reign at the club, and how players such as Wayne Rooney and Rio Ferdinand settled into the group after joining from other clubs. The beauty at United was there was a high standard there, he says, and that standard was high. It wasn't just the standards that the manager put in place, or the coaching staff, but the ones that the players put in place. It was a case of, if you want to be here, you accept this and you keep the standard high, and you take that on and you challenge it a lot more. As coaches, we were there to improve the players. Yes, they are top, top players, but you're not looking for massive improvement. You're looking at a bit of improvement. And if you get it from them all, then that's a huge improvement. So when you challenge with Ronaldo and Rooney, they are pretty decent individuals in their own right. Yes, they have egos. But ultimately, they want to succeed and they want the legacy. You have to be there for them. And that was easy for me. It's about relaying those messages to them. Keep your head down. Do your work. You're a good player. That's why you're there. And it will all come together. Another key factor in the standards across Phelan's two spells at Manchester United was the impact of Ronaldo, with the former assistant revealing that, during the Portuguese forward's return to Old Trafford, he lost some players due to the standards he asked for in training. The second time round, he came in a lot older and a lot more opinionated, strong-willed, Phelan added. He still had massively high standards and was terrific to work with but I'd probably say a tougher mindset. He had been at Manatee. He had been Portugal's ever-present. He had been at Madrid. I liked it because he didn't want his standards to drop. He wanted other people's standards to come up. And sometimes you lose a few people along the way when that happens. I remember certain times when he pushed and pushed hard, and he didn't get much reaction or much response, and there was frustration. When you deal with top, top people, it's about them and where they can finish and where they can get to. They want to look back and go, wow, that was successful. And he probably realized, and I don't know as I never had that conversation with him, that he couldn't do it at Manchester United. So his challenges were elsewhere.